Okay. Let's start over again, guys. I'd just like to ask all the jurors to be on mute until you are instructed otherwise. Please proceed, Larry. Okay. Uh, we make it more dramatic, Jason. Okay. Uh, this is a dramatic moment uh, because we are presenting today an indictment of Dr. Anthony Fauci. We've had several grand jury sessions. This is the 15th session all in all, but we've had three, I think perhaps even four concerning Dr. Fauci. We've had a number of witnesses who have appeared, Dr. Judy Mikovits, Kent Hecken Lively, her partner, Judy Mikovits, who worked with Dr. Fauci, John Cullen, others, information, evidence that's been presented showing that Fauci collaborated with the communist Chinese, sent the seeds of COVID-19 over to them, arranged for a grant, $3.7 million grant to further gain of function research. We presented testimony from Senator Rand Paul, who confronted him on that as well. And this gave rise to the Chinese. It was reasonably foreseeable, and it was certainly grossly negligent and reckless that they would turn it into a bioweapon. And even if not a bioweapon, that it would be released because the research that was being done in Wuhan would have been illegal in our Fort Detrick lab, the military lab in Maryland. In addition to that, he's withheld material information to the American people about the short, medium, and long-term effects of these vaccines. He stands to profit from the marketing of these vaccines, which are making trillions of dollars for Big Pharma, for Pfizer, for Moderna, for Johnson & Johnson. The government, if you want to call it that, has pushed these vaccines knowing that in many ways they're dangerous, they're inadequate testing, if no testing at all. Moderna admitted that with regard to pregnant women. Certain groups, blacks and Hispanics, because of the DNA makeup of these groups and other factors, uh, it can be very dangerous for them. Those who already have had COVID-19, uh, it can trigger a dangerous reaction, uh, which can be deadly. That's not in dispute. Now we know the vaccines don't even work. I mean, let's use just one example. The number one golfer in the world, John Rahm, who at the Memorial Tournament, right before he was to play the fourth round, the final round, and he was eight shots ahead, took a test, turned out he had COVID-19, was disqualified. He hadn't taken the second shot. Well, he then took the second shot, went on to win the U.S. Open, and now wanted to play in Tokyo, Japan, in the Olympics. So the Japanese made him take another test, and he has COVID-19 again. So they're being told that we should take risks with our bodies and our lives. It's being pushed on children, pushed on pregnant women, pushed on adolescents, pushed on the elderly, when, in fact, the vaccine is not as effective as they claim it is. And then we don't know the long-term risks because it's never been finally approved by the FDA. And even if it was, the FDA is in the hip pocket of pharma, big pharma, the big pharmaceutical companies. It's a revolving door. I know because I used to represent the FDA at the U.S. Department of Justice when I was a young lawyer in the antitrust division. So we are presenting our indictment today. It's, it's a 17-page work. Uh, we're presenting it to the grand jury in draft form. If you find anything in there that you want to change, if you don't feel that we've justified any aspect of that, we, the prosecution, the citizen's grand jury prosecutor, you can make changes. We're going to give it to you in word. I want you to elect a foreman or a forewoman, whatever you want to call that person. Of course, in today's world, who knows whether they're male or female. I'm being facetious, but not really. It's up to you to elect someone who uh, can sign this indictment once you deliberate. Uh, this will be up as everything else we do. It's transparent. It's up on our website at freedomwatchusa.org. So you may review it, but we're also going to give you a hard copy. And then you deliberate and you'll report back next week <clears throat> as to whether or not your four person uh, will sign this grand jury indictment for you. And once that happens, we'll proceed to a trial. And we'll give Dr. Fauci notice of the crimes he's been accused of. Again, it's just probable cause, which Justice Scalia said can occur even on mere suspicion in a grand jury proceeding. He'll have an opportunity to defend himself, as Robert Mueller will. We've already indicted him, and as, as is Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, and James Biden will also, because they've been indicted as well. But let's talk about Fauci now. And he'll have notice. He can come to a trial, wage a defense. We're going to have a judge. We'll have a jury that can be selected. We will try him. We will seek his indictment. He frankly warrants indictment and sentencing. 
get conviction and sentencing, in my opinion, for life, with the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people that have died because of his conduct, his criminal conduct. And it's time that we, me and the American people started to hold these, hold these people accountable because we know that our so-called government won't. They're part of one big club. They protect each other, Democrat or Republican, making money hand over fist at the expense of the American people. Well, the American people now it's time to rise up as our founding fathers rose up in 1776 when they took their legal system back from King George, when he had stolen it and taken it to London, England. And we need to enforce the law under the laws of nature and nature's God. And for that reason, you know, in this indictment, as you'll see, and Mr. Goodman is going to read it to you in just a few minutes. We have a section that will deal with lying to the American people because under man-made law, not the laws of nature and nature's God, which are supposed to track the Ten Commandments, that's our Judeo-Christian heritage, that's supposed to be the basis of our legal system, is that when an American citizen lies to the government under 18 U.S.C. 1001, he will get 10 years for each material lie or omission of fact. The same should be true for when government officials lie to the American people. But of course, no law exists for that because they're not going to hold themselves accountable. So consequently, under the laws of nature and nature's God, under our Ten Commandments, they're going to be held accountable. And that's part of the indictment. We're not bound by the laws that were created by these politicians in Washington, D.C. We are bound by the laws of nature and nature's God and what is just and what is fair and what is ethical. That being said, I turn it over to Mr. Goodman, Jason, to read this indictment to the Citizens Grand Jury. It'll be presented to you in draft form. You'll deliberate, like I said. Next week, we'll reconvene, and I will ask your foreperson to sign whatever you have agreed is the true bill of indictment against Dr. Anthony Fauci. Mr. Goodman, Jason, take it away. Read the indictment. Thank you, Larry. Before the Citizens Grand Jury, this is an indictment brought by the people of the United States of America against Dr. Anthony Stephen Fauci. Criminal indictment. The Citizens Grand Jury charges that, one, Dr. Anthony Stephen Fauci began... Now, read, read the subheadings to Jason, general allegation. Oh, These are the general allegations, of course. Dr. Anthony Stephen Fauci began working at the National Institute of Health. Here and after, we'll refer to it as the NIH. It's a subunit that he's working at, the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, NIAID. He started working there in 1968. The NIH is a separate and independent agency from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC. Despite public misperception of his role, Dr. Anthony Stephen Fauci has never worked at the CDC, nor has he ever led the NIH but has influenced public health agencies and officials far beyond his official role and authority at the sub-agency NIAID. Dr. Anthony Stephen Fauci graduated from New York City's Cornell Medical College in 1966 and then conducted his internship and residency. That is, Dr. Anthony Stephen Fauci has almost always worked as a government bureaucrat not really as a practicing physician, beginning his internship and residency as a required continuation of his medical degree in 1966, but then beginning his government career in 1968. From 1970 to 1971, Dr. Anthony Fauci was briefly the chief resident at the New York Hospital at the Cornell Medical Center. Nevertheless, his career was overwhelmingly in government, not private medical practice. Dr. Anthony Stephen Fauci was appointed as the director of NIAID in 1984. Dr. Anthony Stephen Fauci has continued as the director of NIAID from 1984 up through the present and continuing. In 1984, Dr. Anthony Stephen Fauci's primary initiative beyond the regular administrative tasks of running NIAID was to develop a vaccine for inoculating people against the AIDS disease caused by the HIV virus. The AIDS disease was then spreading rapidly and alarmingly as an epidemic. According to some virologists, like Dr. Judy Mikovits, who has worked with Dr. Anthony Fauci at the National Institute of Health, one reason that the AIDS disease was then spreading rapidly and alarmingly as an epidemic was that the public health establishment and government, including Dr. Anthony Stephen Fauci and medical practice, were pursuing the wrong strategies, which were ineffective, thus allowing AIDS to proliferate. 
that is, a disease that is being addressed ineffectively, will appear to be extremely threatening and difficult to stop. But if addressed with measures that actually work, may well quickly shrink. Uh, whether a disease seems very dangerous or not may be a result of whether the best prevention, treatment, and therapy is being applied. The public health establishment in government, including Dr. Anthony Fauci and medical practice, were overly fixated for their own personal reasons on developing an expensive vaccine for the AIDS disease caused by the HIV virus instead of using effective treatments. The public health establishment, including Dr. Anthony Stephen Fauci, were overly fixated for their own personal reasons on expensive solutions like new patented, patentable vaccines for AIDS over effectiveness of limiting the disease. Today, AIDS has dramatically receded as a threat to public health because attention and effort shifted towards medicines and treatments that actually work and away from medicines and treatments that are expensive and profitable to manufacturers. Because of his uh, resistance to more effective methods, Dr. Anthony Stephen Fauci's delay in treating AIDS patients and those most at risk of AIDS effectively led to more deaths than necessary. Dr. Anthony Stephen Fauci became publicly known as a medical leader fighting AIDS, although, in fact, he met with little success in making progress against AIDS. However, he never achieved the goal of developing an AIDS or HIV vaccine. Dr. Anthony Stephen Fauci resisted and ridiculed the research and revelations of others, such as Dr. Judy Mikovits, that many viruses like HIV did not directly cause the AIDS disease. But a sometimes unregulated immune response created the AIDS, AIDS disease response. The AIDS disease response. Dr. Anthony Stephen Fauci has been accused of eventually stealing the discoveries of others and their revelations of the difference between a dangerous virus from the disease that results from it and eventually promoted other people's work as his own. In subsequent years, Dr. Anthony Stephen Fauci as director of the NIAID successively tackled in similar fashion other world epidemics or pandemics such as the original SARS, West Nile virus, swine flu virus, uh, Ebola, and the like. Actually, there's a typo there. I shouldn't say successfully attempted to tackle. That uh, successively. He, he was yeah, unsuccessful, agree. but in succession, he did attempt to address right. these things. Right. Uh, with, each, with each epidemic, Dr. Anthony Stephen Fauci favored the same approaches of pursuing high-cost vaccines and medications favored by major pharmaceutical companies and de-emphasizing more effective but less profitable med medications and treatments. Throughout his career, Dr. Anthony Stephen Fauci has publicly and privately undermined and attacked or plagiarized the work of other researchers pursuing different strategies from his own, uh, intended for his own personal, financial, and other gain. With each epidemic, Dr. Anthony Stephen Fauci also refused to consider, rejected, and argued against research by virologists that viral epidemics might not stand alone, but experience cumulative or interactive effects such that a prior viral infection or vaccination may leave pathways in cellular lining or residues from vac uh, vaccination or infection. Throughout his career, Dr. Anthony Stephen Fauci has rejected an undermined investigation into the possible interactions within humans between different viral diseases. Throughout his career, Dr. Anthony Stephen Fauci has rejected and undermined research into why some patients experience very light symptoms and very little effect from a virus where a few of the infected persons suffer catastrophic or at very least serious disease reactions. What accounts for the radically divergent disease response from the same virus in different people? Throughout his career, Dr. Anthony Stephen Fauci has rejected and undermined research into the possibility that patients who have had an infection in the past from one viral disease may react to a new viral disease quite differently because of the combination in their system of the two different viruses or residues in their system that, uh, in their system than someone who has only been exposed to just one of the viruses alone. Throughout his career, Dr. Anthony Stephen Fauci has rejected and undermined findings claiming that the process for growing vaccines for their mass production contains unsafe residue in their cell lines and mediums for growing more vaccines, thus risking harm to those being vaccinated not from the vaccine, but from the medium in which the vaccine has grown